Hello YouTubers, we're here at Blade 2017 with the famous high priest of nice design, <laughs> Gavin Hawk. And we're going to learn a little bit about Gavin. First thing I want to know, Gavin, is what is it like being Grant Hawk's son? Yes, living in the shadow of Grant Hawk. Um, it's actually not so bad. Uh, there was some issues when we were younger, or when I was younger, and he was younger. Um, well, in the beginning it was easier, I guess, because I was more of just a collaborator. Uh, so I would come up with an idea, and then he'd take it and run with it. And then, you know, I'd say, oh, you know, I don't really like that, and he might change it or do something. But at a certain point, I was just getting my whole, my whole complete ideas. Which was difficult because my ideas had to be a much higher level because it had to be better than his ideas. And so as I got older, finally my ideas were getting a little bit better than his. And that, I don't know, that kind of caused a little bit of uh, friction between us for a while as we kind of, I don't know, the passing of the guard, I guess. Uh, I feel weird because he's probably going to see this, but, uh, but it's, so after we got through that transition to where I was, I was coming up with my own complete systems, uh, I was designing everything, and then he was the one that was giving me tips or pointers or, uh, you know, helping me along with the design. So once we kind of got through that phase in life, um, things have been a lot easier, uh, we get along really well. Um, so yeah, so it was, I don't think I ever really was in his shadow too much, but it was difficult to come up with my own ideas because they had to be so much better than his, and he had good ideas, so it was, it was tough for a while, and, and actually the, uh, the Beetle was the first design that was all my design, so the lock was my idea, the, the styling, everything about it was mine, so whatever year that happened, that's when we had kind of a rough spot, and uh, anyways, here we are now, and everything's happy and wonderful again. Yes, so. obviously growing up with a knife maker, how old were you when you first started making knives? So I was, I don't know, 11, 12, I think my first knife was 12. Uh, and I was, uh, we, we both got into it at the same time. So it's not like my dad was a knife maker and then he brought me into it. It was more that uh, he had just gotten custody of me and then, uh, and then he was looking for something to do. And since he had me, he was looking for something he could do with me. And that happened to be knives. And so we both got into knives at the exact same time. Uh, so in the shop, I was helping him with his knives. And then eventually, he actually designed a knife for me that I made. It was a little, little hunter uh, fixed blade knife. And I made him. I sold him to my teachers at school. And, and so that's kind of how I got started uh, in, the, in the whole knife thing. You recently have made a wonderful collaboration with Serge Pesenko called The Orbit, and I'm going to pan down to The Orbit here. Tell me about how you met Serge, uh, how you guys decided to collaborate, how that all started with The Orbit. You know, I don't even remember how I met Serge. Um, oh, actually I do now. He, uh, he bought a Beetle. He really liked the Beetle, um, and I think he reached out to me on... I don't know, Facebook or something, whatever it was. And and so we started talking back and forth. Uh, obviously I liked his designs, he liked what I was doing, and he really wanted to do a beetle-like knife. And so we did a collaboration, it was called The Locust, which was based on the beetle mechanism. Uh, and we did a custom collaboration on that. It went really well, Serge was just a good guy, uh, very artistic. And so, yeah, we just kind of developed a friendship from there, and, uh, and so we started working together. And then he really, again, really liked the Hawk Lock, and uh, part of the thing I wanted to do with my mid-tech line is collaborate with other knife makers, um, because I have a really cool lock, and, and of course we have our own style, which, is, which some have said is a little polarizing. It's, it's generally based on a mechanism, and, and it's very mechanical, and so, I really like bringing in other makers that their focus is on design work. Because I think with our mechanical skills and their design skills, uh, we're able to come up with a really cool product. And so uh, the Orbit is, is that product, uh, which is the, the Hawk Lock with Serge Panchenko's styling to it. 
And so on this one, uh, Serge came, sent me the initial drawings of this uh, of this cleaver knife, and it was it needed a little bit of work. Uh, it was a little bit fatter and bigger, and uh, and so I I just kind of helped streamline you know skinny it up a little bit, and then and then I engineered the lock uh, and got everything to work. Um, and of course, I guess taking a couple steps backwards, we we had kind of some call or conference calls back and forth on the design elements that we wanted to incorporate into the Hawk Lock. Um, obviously, it, we wanted to have the button here. Uh, some of the earlier Hawk Locks, um, like the Mud Knife, had a button right here and the RAM, which is a place that people put their thumb, and so that would have that stops the action. So, so anyways. Uh, we wanted the button up closer to the pivot, high on this side. Uh, we wanted an external stop pin, uh, and and one of the more important features is the flipper placement. And so you'll notice this flipper is a lot uh, is rotated further than most people's. The reason for that, not only do you get more travel on the flipper itself, but once the knife is open, the flipper disappears into the profile of the knife. It, it's, I hate knives where the flipper is sticking right here and you, it's just, it's awkward. You don't know where to get it. Um, and so with this, with the flipper rotated around, um, it just it just disappears part of the profile. And, and actually this design's kind of unique because the the guard comes up in here, but then when it's, when it's open, now you have a, a guard. So it, it, it almost like it has two flippers, but it has the best of both worlds. It has, uh, a flipper you can actually get a hold of and, and have a travel on the flipper plus you have a perfectly placed guard um, so yeah that was uh, that was the initial uh, uh, design requirements and then Serge went at it and then I uh, modeled it and figured out all the engineering parts and had uh, millet manufacture it well, it's a wonderful knife, and thank you for your time and your interview. This is yes. uh, Lightus and Best from Blade 2017 with Gavin Hawk. Thank you so much for your time, Gavin. Yep.